Hi, I'm Ian Reid. I've been part of the management team here at the Napier Municipal Theatre for the past 20 years, and I'm about to give you a history of theatre in Napier. In 1877, in Napier, theatricals became a sought-after form of entertainment, particularly in the performing side of things. The Napier Theatre Company was formed that year, and in 1879, converted the Odd Fellows Hall to the Theatre Royal. This theatre stood on the current Desco site in Tennyson Street, and this wooden structure was unfortunately destroyed in a disastrous fire and was ironically replaced by the town fire station in 1921. In 1910, the borough was very prosperous and saw electrification of the town area and implementation of a tram service. The renowned saltwater baths were also built on the Marine Parade. The then Mayor of Napier, John Vigor Brown, proposed that a theatre befitting the city be built in Clive Square, which was a popular area for band concerts. The building was to include the borough offices and a budget of £27,000 was reported as being unanimously approved by ratepayers. Democracy, however, ruled when a small group of concerned Napier citizens petitioned Parliament to retain the Green Belt and the Band Rotunda, so an alternative site was purchased from the Tiffin family in Tennyson Street, which added £6,500 to the cost, and the theatre ended up costing £34,000. In 1912, the Australian architect William Pitt designed his Italian Renaissance-style theatre, and this was completed that year. Features included four boxes, plush drapery in blue, white and gold, grand staircases, a large orchestra pit, and a stage area of 50 feet by 70 feet. And this was reputably the largest stage in Australasia. Seating totaled 1,500 on three levels, and for a population of 10,500 in those days, this would equate to having a 9,000 seat theatre here today. November 1912 saw Napier Operatic Society open the theatre with a season of a Greek slave. During the opening, a Mr Barber, the chairman of Wellington Opera House, where building had just begun, visited the complex. In his written report to the Wellington Evening Post, he advised that visiting every portion of the theatre during the opera, he found not the slightest difficulty in hearing even the weakest voice, and that all sight lines to the stage were superb. In his article, he proclaimed Napier to host the best theatre in the whole Dominion, and that he hoped that the Wellington's Opera House would emulate some of these fine features, and when completed, would rob Napier of the honour of possessing the premier theatre in New Zealand. In 1931, the first municipal theatre was completely ruined by the Napier earthquake. In 1935, Louis Hay, the renowned architect, won a competition to design the replacement theatre. Hay's planned Grand Art Deco Palace of Entertainment, however, proved too costly for the council of the day and they asked that plans be altered to meet a budget of £15,000, which was less than half the cost of the original 1911 theatre. Hayes' projected cost had been £17,000. Plans for this grand building were many years located in London, and copies are now held by the Museum and Art Deco Trust. In 1937, Mr Watson, the borough architect, was eventually asked to prepare plans and building began. The final cost was £23,000. On June 3, 1938, the new municipal theatre was officially opened by Bertha Hercock, the mayoress of Napier. The ceremonial key is on display in the Panpack foyer. The now 1154-seat theatre on two levels opened to a two-night season by the Napier Frivolity Minstrels and was immediately followed by the Napier Operatic Society's production of Rio Rita. A two-page article in the Daily Telegraph gave lavish praise to the theatre. However, in spite of the media's lavish praise, theatre users were critical of everything about the venue, including poor acoustics, bad sight lines, and a basic lack of facilities backstage. In 1957, criticism reached a crescendo when Leo Bestel, the then director of the Hawke's Bay Museum, wrote in the local newspaper of hosting friends from the touring production of Call Me Madam. After their Napier performance, 
The leading lady had been complaining of having to shout herself hoarse to be heard in what she called that awful venue. Bestel further advised the theatre world regarded the venue with many misgivings and he feared that it would attract very few shows. In his newspaper article, he stated that whilst aesthetically the theatre was great inside, it could only be described as regrettably inadequate practically. Recommendations he made were to push out the back wall, raise the roof, shorten the auditorium, enlarge the foyer areas, bring the circle forward and add a gallery, all which would cost an absolute fortune. There were subsequent letters to the editor of the Napier Daily Telegraph from well-known Napier theatre personalities like Jack Fairclough, Wally Island and Wendy Dool that were all in defence of the existing theatre. Council duly acknowledged receiving Mr Bestel's letter and noted its contents without taking any immediate action. Over the next 30 years, however, some improvements were made, such as the addition of a loading dock, hot water in the dressing rooms, improved lighting, and the one toilet pan backstaged increased to three. The 1957 improvements identified were left unresolved until 1987, when continual deferral of maintenance of the theatre was highlighted at a council meeting, and several working parties were formed with subsequent recommendations leading to the planned redevelopment. In 1993, public submissions were made and in July, the report was duly adopted by Council with working drawings completed, contracts let and stage one back of house redevelopment commenced. In 1995, with stage one complete, the theatre reopened to a three week season of Napier Operatic Society's Les Miserables. There were 19 performances with a standing ovation every night of the season. Later that year, the Napier Operatic Society staged the two-week season of Chicago that also experienced full houses and the theatre closed once again in December 1995. In early 1996, stage two, which was the front of house or public areas, began with the completion date in April 1997 and the grand opening by the then Governor-General Sir Michael Hardy Boys taking place in May that year. The existing theatre now has a staff of five full-time equivalents with some 30 casual staff on call and available for events we host. The theatre seats 989 on two levels, the circle seats 327 and the stalls 662. The stage is 14 metres deep and 7.4 metres wide and is 16.1 metres in height under the grid. The proscenium arch is 12 metres wide and six metres in height, with a movable four stage able to be lowered to orchestra pit level or anywhere in between. The iconic symbol of Art Deco Napier is the theatre's Leaping Lady. This image is supposedly based on Isadora Duncan, a world renowned dancer with a fondness for flowing scarves, which was to be her contributing factor to her death in an automobile accident in Nice, France in 1927. Her long silk scarf, draped around her neck, became entangled around the open spoked wheels and the rear axle, breaking her neck. We have a full counterweight system that operates everything you see that flies. We were the first theatre in New Zealand to have this system installed in 1993, with the final installation of some components taking place in 2013 to complete the set. We have eight dressing rooms in total, two star dressing rooms, with en suites. In all, there are a total of eight toilets and six showers, and rooms are fully air conditioned, and sound from the stage is available throughout backstage. The theatre itself is also fully air conditioned, with heating supplied through two gas fired boilers and cooling through a water cooling system up at roof level backstage. Dinners on stage have become popular. We host these with up to 170 seated at fully catered tables with room for a dance floor and the accompanying musicians. The Pampak Foyer is used for a range of functions from seating 280 theatre style to cocktail functions for up to 400. This area also hosts art and photographic exhibitions and free lunchtime concerts each month. Our Steinway Grand Piano being situated there when not in use on the stage. 
The Building Society mezzanine is often used for pre and post show hostings and can accommodate up to 150 people. The Westpac room doubles as a green room from backstage and when it is not used by the performers is also available to hire for pre or post show functions. The Steinway Grand Piano was the result of fundraising by an enthusiastic group of Napier people, many of them local music teachers, and the sum of 290,000 was raised in under nine months. The new Steinway was selected from the factory in Germany by Professor Patrick O'Byrne, an Irish-born, New Zealand-raised pianist, who was the Vice-Chancellor of the University of the Arts in Bremen at the time. The Steinway cost approximately 250,000 and was gifted to the city with the surplus funds raised used to refurbish the older Steinway situated at the Napier Century Theatre.